Hello, guys today we will see the final tutorial for the vellum series. So this was our last output, today we will going to add all these elements. Let's do it. We have already separated the layers. Let's copy the top layer subnet and paste it here. We only need to make a few minor changes, nothing else. Delete the fuse node. Change the remesh target size to 0 0.005. So now we need to add a pin group. As you know we already have the same pin group name for the top and skirt. But for this layer, we need a separate name for the pin group to have more controls, since we need to stitch the button with other layers inside the solver. I need to do it procedurally so that the other layer will get the pin group automatically. Here the parent node name is the isolate button, so I only want button underscore pin. We will extract the isolate from the parent node. To do this we will use the string replace function. Write this code in the group name. First, let's call the parent name here using op input function. If you write this directly this ain't going to work, we need to use backtick to make it work. Now as you can see we are getting the parent node name here but we need to remove the isolate and keep only the button. To do this add this function. We need to add this string replace into a backtick. Now this takes three inputs, first, the string, which is our op input result, then which string word we need to remove and the third one will be the new word that we want to replace with. So in the double inverted comma write isolate underscore, and we need to replace it with nothing so just put the double inverted comma again. Close the function using the backtick. Now we need to read the current operator name so put down underscore dollar os. Now if you press the middle mouse then you can see we get a button underscore pin. Cool. Now we need to change the pinpoint selection. For button, we need to add all the points in the pin group. Now we need to do the same thing for the ribbons also. Let's do it. Here in the ribbons we have mainly three elements that we need to prepare it separately. First the neckband, then we have ribbons, Then we have ribbons holder. Let's isolate each of them manually using a split node. The neckband had two geo make sure to select both. Since we are doing the prep procedurally, Make sure to change the name to isolate underscore neckband. So that the correct group will get automatically created inside the subnet. Add a fuse node to snap both layers. Seems like the fuse it's not working. Reduce the remesh target size to 0.002. Again viewport issue. Now if you go to pin group node you can see it had already generated the correct name. Now we need to only select the points which are the top part of the neckband. Turn off the base group and turn on keep in bounding region. Since we have copied this node from the top layer, it had already the bounding box set. We don't need to change anything here. 
Now again take a split node. In this one, we need to split the ribbon holder. Again change the name like the previous one. Duplicate the subnet. In this one, we just need to change the pinpoint selection. Turn off the bounding region and turn on the base group. Select the point from both sides. Press Shift plus G. By pressing this, selection will get grow. Cool. Add a null to the second output of the split and name it as isolate ribbon. Again make a copy of the subnet and connect to the null. In this layer we don't need the pin group so delete that group node where we are creating the pin group. We don't need to change anything on this layer. We need to create the groups like we had created for the top and skirt after the subnet. Copy the group node and paste it here. Here name the group node as the neckband. Change his name to Ribbon Holder. And for this one keep it as a ribbon. Merge all the layers. You can connect the out null after the merge to keep the network understandable. Now again copy the subnet and paste it here. Reduce the remesh target size to 0.01. My power went down. Let's continue again. In the pin group let's select the point. Here we need to select the points which will be stitched to the skirt and top. Select one point. Now if you press Shift A and select other points it will select all the points which will lie in its lineup. For the waste part we can switch the viewport to front and select all the points. After that let's select the ruffles points. We can select using the same method that we used before. So here we have some points which are selected accidentally. Let's remove them from both the sides. I'm going to use the lasso tool to remove them. Now select the points again for this layer. Once it's selected press shift G to grow the selection and hit enter. Add a group node here and name it ruffles. We need to do the same thing for hand also. Let's copy this and paste it here. Delete the fuse node. Set the remesh target to 
Now again we need to select the inside edges of the ruffles hand and the waist part. There was some issue and my selection is not working properly. So I had to manually select all the points. Once the points get selected press shift G to grow the selection and hit enter. Now in the group write ruffle underscore hand. Let's add a group for buttons also. Now merge all the layers and connect the output node to it. Cache it to disk. Now add a null node after the file cache. Let's move it a bit far from the older node. Now hit the shelf tool split by the group. Since we already have the constraint set up for the top and skirt, delete the blast node from this layer. Copy the vellum constraint and connect it to the ruffles hand network. So go the top constraint node, and make sure to turn on the layer parameter. Keep the value to 0 for this layer. Do the same for the skirt node also. But for this set the layer value to 1. For the ruffles hand set the layer value to 2. By doing this the solver will get to know that we have multiple cloth layers so the solver will define a stacking order for layer shock. If we don't turn on this sometimes the cloth will treat the whole layer as a single layer. Due to which the layer shock parameter will not work properly. Now for the ruffles hand constraint reduce the density to 0 0.001. You can remove the pin group since we don't have a pin group on this layer. I forgot to remove it. Copy the constraint node and paste it for ruffles front. Change the layer to 3. Remove the pin group. Rest should work fine. Now the for remaining 4 layers merge all of them. Delete the null since we are going to make them as one layer. Duplicate the vellum constraint node. Change the layer value to 4. Rest keep it as it is. Now we need to attach the elements using glue constraints. Take a vellum glue constraint node. If you see then these buttons are attached to the ribbons. This is attached to the holder and this also got attached to the neckband. As you can see the knot is currently too big. Reduce the rest length scale to make it a tight knot when it gets simulated.
we don't want our glue constraints to get stretched. So change the stretched multiplier value to 1e plus 10. One last thing we need to do. We need to attach this neckband to the top. Take vellum attached to the geometry node. In the third input connect our top geo. If you see it now it's attached but it attaching the whole layer. We need to only attach the neckband. In the group select a neckband. Now add a vellum pack to all the layers. Merge all the vellum layer. Now let's quick preview the simulation. As you can see in the earlier stage only the vellum attach is not working properly. This is happening because we had created the attach constraint before the sim. In the simulation the top cloth points are getting deformed that why the constraint is not working. To fix this issue we need to create the constraint inside the solver. In the older version of Houdini, it was working fine from this workflow, but in 19.5 it's not working as expected. If you see the ruffles parts also they are not stitched with the top. Dive inside the solver. Take a vellum constraint node. Now we are creating constraints inside the DOP network. This means the constraint is going to update on each frame. In the constraint type, select stitch point. In the group select a neckband. I don't know why it's showing the constraint as a sphere. Anyways in the target group select top. Turn on the max distance and set the value to 0.6. I found this value while doing R&D. Let's preview this. As you can see now this is attached to the top. Don't worry about this gaps. Increase the constraint iteration to 800 for better result. We can increase the substeps also, but I'm not going to increase them. You can do some experiments with higher substeps. We don't need to worry about the gap between them. We can fix that in the post process. Now let's do the same for ruffles. Take again the vellum constraint node. Change the constraint type to stitch points. In the group type select points. Now we need to select the pin group for the ruffles. From the group select ruffles pin groups for both hand and front. Now we need to attach this to the top and skirt. So in the target group select top and skirt. Turn on max distance and set the value to 0.6. Now the last step is we need to stitch the ribbon holder with the waist part. If you see here, we had only one holder which is attached with the necklace. But the waist holder is not attached to anything. You can turn on attached to geometry for the visual representation. Duplicate the vellum constraint inside the solver. Change the group to holder pin. And in the target geometry, change the group type to points. In the target group select ruffles front pin. Set the max constraint distance to 0.01.
Now everything is okay, let's make a preview. We can add a color node just for the visualization of different elements. Set the class to primitive. Change the color type to random from the attribute. In the attribute select name. Let's create a flipbook. Cool. Now you can see the all the layers are attached currently and it's not falling. Let's cache this sim to disk. As you can see here, the ruffles are not attached with the top, but this won't create any issue. Go the wrap node. Let's turn off the blast node. As you can see we were having gaps between the top and the ruffles, but after the wrap the gaps is filled. Always remember never to invest your time to solve small error in the simulation. There are tons of methods to fix issues after the simulations. Now in the wrap go the override tab. In the overrides write 5, because we have 5 layers. Now here the geos are our wrap cloth and the drivers are out simulated tech mesh. Let's select the geos with their respective drivers. In the geo 1 select the render underscore button groups. We can also choose using name attributes. In the driver choose the button group. Do the same for all other elements. You can see here are some penetrations, you can fix this with change the iteration value. Add a fuse node. In case if we have double sided separate mesh. Here on the shoulder, we have a penetration, we will fix this using soft transform. In the pivot write $GCX, $GCY, $GCZ. This will change the pivot to its center of the selected points. Now select the penetrated points. Play with the soft radius value. Let's push it up a bit. Cool. Let's make a preview. Thank you guys for watching see you in the next tutorial. You can support me on Patreon, I will keep uploading this kind of advanced tutorial.